Hey guys, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein and welcome to ChessOpeningsExplained.com So today I'm gonna tackle this very annoying gambit called the Stafford Gambit that I've noticed a lot of the players are facing these days online especially in faster time controls and for our repertoire after the moves e4, e5, knight f3, this gambit is not so relevant if black plays knight c6 on move 2, because we're gonna play d4, right, e takes d, bishop c4, this is our standard scotch gambit position, no gambit for black. However, black could try to confuse us a bit. They can say, oh, my pawn on e5 is under attack, I didn't even notice that. I'm going to play bishop c5. <laughs> I guess you can see that black player can really try to go for the gambit. Knight takes e5, and now they play knight c6, hoping to trade the knight. Obviously, you don't have to trade the knight, but they're trying to get the gambit after knight takes, pawn takes. Let's say you develop with knight c3, knight f6, and this is the starting point of the Stafford gambit. Not only is black a pawn down, he's also got these terrible double pawns. But this position is extremely tricky, guys, because there's only one, and I repeat, only one correct move here for white. And if you've never seen that move before, it's not going to be obvious to you what it is. So before we move forward, and I'm going to teach you the simple antidote, let me actually show you a couple of other ways we can reach this position. Another player can try to reach this via the knight f6 move order, which is the Petrov. And after knight takes e5, here we go. Knight c6, takes, takes. Now, of course, d3 is playable. It's a slightly different version of the Stafford Gambit because you didn't commit the knight on c3. But if you play something like logical, like knight c3, bishop c5, once again, we have reached this position. And of course, there is the more sort of classical way to reach this position after the moves knight c6 um, actually after the moves knight f6 knight c3 bishop c5 takes 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 that's one way and even after the move knight c6 if you play knight c3 on move 3 if you want to go to the four knight scotch with the with knight of six d4 this is let's say your plan in this game to try to get some kind of a solid structure followed by knight six is six bishop d3 castles once again i've seen people play this move bishop c5 which initially falls for a well-known trap after knight takes if knight takes back d4 gives white a really nice edge the problem though once again if they want to play the stafford game but they can knight takes pawn takes and we reached the exact same position. So lots of different move orders, the position is exactly the same. Okay, so let me show you what to do here. Now, don't play bishop e2 and castle. That's bad, let me show you why. I've even fell for this in one of my blitz games on chess.com while I was streaming after queen d4, castles, h5, right? And now the logical move here is to play something like h3. Well, guess what? Knight g4. You can't really prevent this knight g4 idea. The problem is f2 pawn is hit, and after hg, hg, you are getting mated. Okay, guys? Queen e5 is basically unstoppable threat. Even if you take on g4, Queen e5, queen h2, that's game over. Notice how the f pawn is pinned. You can't play g3, obviously you can't play f4. d4 is not going to help you, queen h2 mate. Bishop h3, he's simply going to uh, take on h3 and still win. This is already game over. Believe it or not, this move, bishop e2, is the losing move. Lots of grandmasters fell for that trap, I have to say. The correct and only move here is h3 x clan all right this is ultimate prophylactic thinking queen d4 
queen f3. Notice how it's vital that the queen cannot be attacked and the knight can come to g4. Bishop e6, d3, and you kind of get the picture. You can castle queenside. They castle queenside typically, and now you can play a3 or bishop e3. There's a tiny, tiny um, trap that you have to avoid after queen b4. Don't take the bishop because there's a very powerful intermezzo hitting the rook and the knight, and you're just basically lost. Can't protect both. So simply castle. White is close to winning. If the bishops get traded, you can take with the queen hitting the a pawn. If king b8, kick the queen. <clears throat> and then after queen a5, you can literally do whatever you want. You can play bishop e2, d4, f4. No worry whatsoever. White is doing quite well. All right, guys. So that's the refutation right there. The key move is h3. Whenever you see this gambit, you have the central pawn, better structure, queen f3, d3, and then no worry whatsoever. All right, hopefully you're going to play h3 and refute all of these uh, crazy gambit players. Thank you very much. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessOpeningsExplained.com.